Robert Vadra, India's fastest multi-billionaire and inside story. Tata took more than a century to reach there. Ambani even with unlimited political help took 50 years to become billionaire. But Delhi businessman Robert Vadra took just less than 10 years to become a multi-billionaire. How? Why Indian newspapers and television channels are scared to discuss this story? Reason is simple Robert Vadra not an ordinary Indian businessman. He is in fact third in line to become India's next prime minister. Of course Robert Vadra is son-in-law of Indian's power broker Antonio Maino Sonia Gandhi. No wonder Indian newspapers and television channels are too scared to discuss this subject. But we live in a free world let's freely discuss and applaud phenomenal growth of India's fastest billionaire businessman. Let's start with background of Robert Vadra from a period before his meeting his golden goose Priyanka. Robert in fact only half Indian. He was born to Rajinder and Maureen Wadhara in 1969. Rajinder Vadra hails from Uttar Pradesh and Maureen Akamikdana of Scottish origin. Before entering to India's royal family Robert Vadra was running a recycle metal business I in simple terms collecting used industrial waste from companies and resell it as you could imagine not a golden egg laying business. It's quite amazing that in next 10 years he grown into multi-billionaire. Robert Vadra met Priyanka Gandhi at the house of common expatriate friend Otavio Quatroki. Yes the surprise surprise Bo Fors a scandal middleman Quatroki. Robert Vedra's marriage with Priyanka was in 1997. But it was followed by tragic and suspicious deaths of his brother, sister, and his father in the next decade. He had one brother Richard Vadra, who was found dead in September 2003 at his Vasant Vihar residence under very suspicious circumstances. His sister Michelle too had natural death, died in a car accident in 2001. His father Rajinder Vadra committed suicide on April 2009, under very suspicious circumstances. But the story was not published widely by the Indian media. No one in India wants to bring shame to India's royal family. Recently Economic Times and other finance newspapers disclosed the business empire Robert Vadra made in the last 10 years was truly eye-opener. Hotels, planes, bars, antique chains, malls around prime locations in India with help of none other than India's number one real estate company DLF. Also part ownership in DLF Indian Premier League franchise. Most of independent analysts points these phenomenal growth points only one thing absolutely in shameful corruption and favoritism to Robert Vedra, being Sonia Gandhi's son-in-law. Also remember DLF was a major builder for scandalous Commonwealth Games in Delhi. We may not dig too much to find why Indian government protected and very reluctant to take actions against Indian Olympic Association President Suresh Kalmati. Surely Suresh Kalmati can blackmail Sonia's government showing favoritism given to DLF because of Robert Vedra. Apart from DLF malls Robert Vedra part owns many Hilton hotels including Hilton Garden in New Delhi. It's very questionable that what kind of expertise will DLF or Hilton will get back from this recycle metal merchant Robert Vedra? Or he is lucky mask to get through all regulatory hurdles in India? Also he is in the list of 33 VIPs, accepted from security checks and frisking at airports and any Indian embassy, the only one without any government position. Other VIPs, like the Dalai Lama, Chief Justice of India, the President, the Prime Minister, and former Presidents. No airport frisking will be very helpful for an antique chain owner, like Robert Vedra, especially when he can easily transfer invaluable Indian antiques to his Italian retail shops. Robert Vedra got many business partnerships with India's biggest real estate company DLF. Cricket is India's next biggest money spinning machine. No wonder Robert Vedra's association was sought by most of franchise owners. Robert Vedra's association with Calcutta Knight Riders and Shayrak Khan is never reported in shameful Indian news media other scandal, where Robert Vedra associated is none other than infamous 2G Spectrum scam. It's alleged that one of the biggest beneficiary companies Unitech is 20% owned by Robert Vedra. No wonder Indian government tried and still trying to derail all enquiries on 2G Spectrum scam, though many ex-ministers are in jail now. It's expected that due to involvement people like Robert Vedra, these case will never reach a decisive conclusion. After all CBI is controlled by Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, 
who is appointed by Robert Vedra's mother-in-law Sonia Gandhi. Media reports on Robert Vadra association with Unitech were suppressed by media moguls in India. Other business Robert gained recent years includes prime properties all over India especially commercial hubs and a taxi business but for air taxis. Yes poor man Robert owns few planes as well. Skylight Hospitality PVTLTD, a company wholly owned by Vadra and his mother Maureen Vadra owns business hotel Hilton Garden Inn in the upscale South Delhi business district Sackett. The hotel is located within the DLF Place Mall, also known as DLF Courtyard. Also several of Robert's companies have received unsecured loans. Unsecured loans are treated as bribe. Yes it's the same reason why Karunanidhi's daughter Connie Mosey in jail now, as she took unsecured loans from Unitech to start Kalinjar TV. Same reason why Dayanidi Marin facing jail term, as he took unsecured loans from Malaysian company via Aircel to his Sun Network. So one rule for them and another rule for India's royal family. It's ironic why India's top real estate company need help from a recycle metal merchant. Reasons are crystal clear DLF need Indian power broker Sonia son-in-law to get through many hurdles in their operations all over India. If this is not blatant misuse of power or favoritism we might need to redefine those words. After the revolutions in Tunisia, Egypt, and Yemen it's right time for India's 1.2 billion poor citizens to question their corrupt political leaders and media moguls. Join the second freedom struggle of Anna Hazar. Support Gandhians like Anna Hazar not fake Gandhis.